In this video, I will be discussing about the strategy for environment science for your UPC prelims 2019. So, environment science, it is one of the core subjects in UPC prelims examination along with this economy, Indian polity, history and geography. So, with a good strategy, you can get a good mark from environment science. So, the relevance or the importance of environment science in your UPC examination is for prelims examination is we can expect at least 9 questions and up to 25 questions from environment science for your prelims examination. That means in between 18 to 50 marks we can expect from environment science for your prelims examination. So that much role environment science has in your UPC prelims preparation. So for the preparation we require three things that means what to study, how to study and where to study. So regarding what to study from environment science, in order to know what you have to study from environment science, we can go through the previous questions. So by going through the previous questions, we will be knowing what are the important areas of UPSC from which of the topics UPSC is are asking questions repeatedly. Okay, so in order to know that we can go through the previous questions and we can go through the 2011 onwards 2018 because from 2011 onwards UPSC has changed their pattern. So it will be also better if you go through the previous questions also from 1990s onwards. So by solving all these previous questions, you will be knowing about the important topics or important areas which are favorite for UPSC. So by knowing these topics, what you have to do is that means how to prepare is we have to prioritize the topics. There are some areas, there are some topics in which UPSC is asking questions repeatedly. Okay, so we need to identify those areas. So you have to prioritize the topics in environmental science. There are lots of topics in environmental science. So we have to prioritize based on the relevance of that topic. For example, Indian organization. So you, every year UPSC is asking questions from Indian organization. Indian environmental organization or international environmental organization. So, environmental organization is an important part in your UPC prelims preparation. So, you will be giving weightage to that environmental organization. Then, species, both animals and plants. So, every year UPC is asking questions from a species. It may be an animal or it may be a plant species. So, species is also an important area for UPC. So, like that, you will be prioritizing, you will be giving weightage to the topics environmental science. So, in order to give this weightage or in order to prioritize the topics, first of all, you have to go through the previous questions. Why I specifically mentioned about 2011-2018 means it is a current trend. It is a current pattern of UPSC. UPSC has changed their pattern since 2011 onwards. So, you will be knowing the pattern, how they are asking questions and also some knowledge you will be also getting from solving previous questions. So, knowledge, some tricks as well as the areas or the topics you will be getting by solving the previous questions. So, once you got all the topics from environmental science, you have to be clear with all this concept related to that topics. So, first of all, you will be prioritizing the topics. Then you have to go through the concepts related to that topics. So, for example, environment science is having the topics like ecosystem, biodiversity, biodiversity conservation, its threats like that. So, we need to be thorough with the concepts related to that environment science topics. So, that's one point. And second point is, nowadays, the current trend of UPSC is, they are asking so much of questions from uh, current affairs. So, current affairs is an important area for UPSC. Okay. So, from environment science, this year there were around 9 questions from environment science. In 2018, there were 9 questions from environment science for your prelims examination. Out of that, around 5 questions were based on current affairs. So, the relevance of current affairs is increasing in UPSC prelims examination. So, that's why <coughs> you have to update with the current affairs related to environment science. So, you will be knowing, you will be thorough with the concept related to environment science. After that, you have to update the current affairs related to environment science. So, there are lots of articles comes on news every day related to environment science, related to species, related to protected areas, related to degradation of environment, climate change like that. So, that's why we have to update with the current affairs. Now, after that, you have to solve the previous questions. Earlier we discussed about the previous questions. So, you have to solve the previous questions. So, by solving the previous questions, you will be able to read the questions speedily and also you will be able to analyze the questions easily and also you will be able to solve the questions by using some tricks like the elimination method. Obviously, you will be also getting so much of knowledge from by solving these previous questions and also you will be getting the topics, the favorite area of UPSC. Okay. So, by these three areas, that means by knowing all the concept, by updating the current affairs and also by solving the previous questions, you can get a good score from environmental science. So, these are the topic wise analysis of last 8 year UPSC prelims examination and these are the all topics you need to cover in your environment science. Okay. So, you can see from 2011 onwards, 2018, in between 9 to 25 questions are asking from environment science. Okay. 
so that means relevant synonyms and is having and you can see areas like organizations then species is flora and fauna there are some repeated questions they are asking from flora and fauna organizations like that so you have to give priority to this topic so the broader areas the main areas you have to cover from the environmental sciences ecosystem biogeochemical cycles biodiversity species that means fauna and flora then biomes organizations central acts or laws and pollution so these are the broader areas we have to cover from environmental science so now let's go in detail about the topics you have to study so from the ecosystem and biodiversity part these are the main topics you have to be thorough with you have to study well that means the concept related to ecosystem what is ecosystem what are the types of ecosystem what are the components of ecosystem we are having biotic and abiotic components under this ecosystem we are having producers consumers carnivores and what are their relevance and we are having the decomposers what what are their relevance or what are the importance of decomposers in maintaining the natural balance so this kinds of concept we need to know regarding the ecosystem and ecology then we have to study about food chain and food web what is the relevance or what is the importance of food chain and food web and how energy transfer through uh, food chain what is the purpose of food chain like that things then we need to study about ecology initiate the concept of ecology initiate so the species as will be having ecology initiate so we need to know what is the ecology initiate and we need to know about what is the ecology will succession and what are the types of succession and how it happens then we need to know the productivity what is productivity and what are the productivity of the forest what are the productivity of mangroves what are the productivities of, of wetland okay so these kinds of concepts also we need to study then we need to study about ecological pyramids so there are three types of pyramids uh, period of number period of biomass and period of energy so we need to study about that things and out of these three pyramids pyramid of energy is having an importance and what is that okay so these kinds of concepts you have to study then energy flow through food chain so we need to also study about what is keystone species what is the importance of keystone species in an ecosystem or maintain the natural balance and what is this pioneer species and what is this climax community then what is the term known as ecotone and where we can find this ecotone what is the relevance of ecotone then edge effect what is edge effect and where we can find this phenomenon then what is the relevance of carrying capacity what will happen if the carrying capacity increased in an ecosystem and what will happen uh, when the carrying capacity the decrease in an, an ecosystem so these are the concept you have to study regarding ecosystem and also we have to study regarding home range or territory like that things now coming to the biodiversity part we need to study about what is this biodiversity and what are the types of biodiversity and what is the relevance of biodiversity or importance of biodiversity so we need to know the types of biodiversity and the distribution of biodiversity we can see that there are some areas where we can see more biodiversity and some areas where we are having less biodiversity so how they are distributing that means we need to study about biomes we know that uh, there are lots of biomes on earth like the forest biomes grassland biome desert biome tundra uh, aquatic biome like that so this forest can be divided into tropical forest temperate forest taiga like that right so we need to study about the distribution of biodiversity and we need to know how we are calculating how we are measuring the biodiversity that means the terms like species rich richness and species evenness so we need to know the terms like species richness species evenness by using these two methods we are measuring the or we are identifying the biodiversity in an area then we need to study about what is the importance of biodiversity and what are the threats for biodiversity right so we know that in 1992 we were having a convention called as convention on biological diversity in order to protect the biodiversity we were having a convention on biological diversity which was adopted in 1992 rio earth summit right so by that cbd convention on biological diversity it says that there are five major threats for biodiversity so we need to know what are that five major threats for biodiversity along with that there are several other threats also but cbd mainly mentioning about five major threats so we need to know the threats for biodiversity and also we need to know the conservation for biodiversity what are the conservation methods for biodiversity like the in situ conservation ex situ conservation okay then we need to study about invasive species what is the term known as invasive species what is the term known as alien species so this year in 2018 upsc has asked a question regarding an alien an invasive species which was degrading the biodiversity in tamil nadu region okay so invasive species we need to know the concept related to invasive species then the second most important area is organizations and laws so there are lots of international and indian organization which are dealing with environment protection 
and there are some central laws also. So we need to study that. Okay. So from organization, we, what are the things we have to study is what they are stand for, what this organization is stand for, or how they work to protect the environment, whether it is a government organization or non-government organization, whether it is having any par partners or parent organization. For example, I can say an example, UNEP, United Nations Environment Program. That was the main outcome of Stockholm Conference. We are having Stockholm Conference. Okay, so by the Stockholm Conference, we have this UNEP. So UNEP was the main outcome of Stockholm Conference. Right, so like that points we need to study. So if it is having any parallel organization or if the organization is having any major partners, we need to study. So these are the things you have to study regarding organization. Okay, the organization, its purpose, its aim or its vision and how they are working. For example, some organizations, they will be giving funds for the environment protection or some organization will be giving technologies for environment protection or some will be making awareness creation programs. Okay. So, or some organization will be supporting the projects related to environment protection. Okay. So, how these organizations are working? Their aim, their function, okay, how they are working, like that things you have to study regarding organization both international and Indian organizations, right. And there are some central laws in India, for example, Biodiversity Act is there, uh, Wildlife Protection Act is there, Environment Protection Act is there. So we need to study regarding the major provisions of these laws in India, okay. And also we need to study regarding some organization which are established under the provisions of these laws. For example, by the Biodiversity Act, we are having National Biodiversity Authority. So National Biodiversity Authority is constituted under the provisions of National Biological Diversity Act 2002. Then this National Tiger Conservation Authority NPCA is given legal protection by the Indian Wildlife Act, Indian Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Okay. So these are some examples you have to study. Okay. So like this there are some organizations which are established by the provisions of some laws and they are called as statutory bodies. So we need to study regarding the statutory bodies. Okay, so these are the main points you have to note down when you are going for studying this organization and central laws. And when regarding the central laws, we are also having Indian Wildlife Protection in 1972, right? By that Indian Wildlife Protection in 1972, we are having some schedules, schedule 1 to 6. And schedules, these schedules are listing out the names of animals which need to be protected. And schedule 6 is dealing with the plants, schedule 1 to 5 is dealing with the animal protection. So, UPSC is also asking questions related to that. UPSC will be giving the animal is protected by the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Like that statement is be there. So, we need to know the wildlife, uh, the protected animals in India. Okay. Which are given legal protection by Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So, from species, what are the main points you have to study is from both the animal and plants. When we are saying about species, we need to cover both animals and plants. Okay. So, first of all, we need to know the species the main features about a species that means we need to know about the species okay so we need to know what are the main features of that animal what are the character or if it is having any if it is an any endemic species to some part of india that we need to know for example lion tailed macaque it is endemic to uh, silent valley national park right or sangai deer or dancing deer it is endemic to manipur right like that there are some species which are endemic to some regions so we need to study that okay so like that if this species is having any special character we have to study so we need to know the about we need to know about that species and we need to know if that species is having any special character okay for example this year 2018 it is the year of nilakurni okay 2018 this is the year of nilakurni and nilakurni is a endemic plant to western ghat mainly to kerala to the munar region so that the speciality of or the special character of feature of that Nilakurni is it blooms once in 12 years. That's the speciality of Nilakurni. Okay, so it is endemic to Western Ghat. So these kinds of features we need to study regarding a species. And Nilakurni it is related to a plant species, right? Like that and Kajri. Kajri is a tree which is a part of Thorn Forest, which is uh, which is a part of arid region, Kajri tree, and it is a keystone species in Rajasthan region. So we need to know about that species because the cage tree it is in a threat due to the fungal attack and chopping of their branches. So like that, so there are some species which are endemic to some regions and which are some which is having some importance to that habitat. So we need to study regarding that species. 
both animals and plants. So after knowing their special features, we need to go for the distribution of that animal. For example, wherever we can see that species. For example, Silent Valley. On Silent Valley, we can see lion-tailed macaque. Okay. Then Sangha deer, Manipur. Then Asiatic lion in Gujarat. Gharials on waters of or tributaries of Ganga. Right. Then uh, hornbill in the western guard and northeast like that we have to study then kashmir stag or hangul it is in mainly seen in the kashmir region right so like that we need to know the distribution of these species nilakurni it is in the southern part of india that means mainly in kerala right and uh, red sanders it's a plant species mainly endemic to shashidalam biosphere reserve cage tree it is uh, mainly seen in dry regions of rajasthan Arid regions of Rajasthan. So, we need to know about the distribution of this species. After that, we need to know the threat status. So, IUCN is having nine categories of species like the critically endangered, endangered, vulnerable, uh, data deficient, not evaluated, near threatened, extinct, extinct wild. Okay. So, like that, there are nine categories for IUCN. So, we need to know the threatened status of these animals. And after that, we also need to study whether that species is given any legal protection. So, earlier we said that by wildlife protection in 1972, we are having six schedules. So, we need to know whether that species, that animal is given any legal protection by wildlife protection in 1972. Okay. Because that kind of statements were there earlier. Then also, we need to also study regarding aquatic mammals. So, because UPSC is also, also focusing on aquatic mammals like the uh, dugong, aqua, then gangari dolphin. Okay. So, we need to know regarding the Aquatic mammals also and also we need to know regarding the threat what uh, the main threats for that animals for example regarding what is the threat for plants what is the main threat for animals we need to study for example regarding the gangari dolphin the main threat for gangari dolphin is due to the pollution in gange due to the construction of dams in gange and due to the uh, national waterway one project construction of Nas national waterway one and also due to the accidental killing of these dolphins on the propellers of boats or barges. Okay. Because of the National Waterway 1, there will be lots of boats uh, traveling through that Ganga River. And due to that, there will be accidental killing of that Gangari dolphin. So, due to the construction of dam, due to the pollution and due to the development of National Waterway 1, these are the main reason for the threat for aquatic dolphin okay, or Gangari dolphin. So, we need to know what are the main threats for these animals and plants. So, that also we need to study. Right. Then another main area which you need to cover is protected areas. So, we need to know what is protected area and different types of protected areas. There are lots of kinds of protected areas in India like the biosphere reserve, national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, tiger reserves, community reserves, conservation reserves, Ramsar sites, world heritage sites, hotspots. Right. So, like that there are lots of protected areas in India. So, we need to know the concepts regarding these protected areas. What is Biosphere Reserve? What is Tiger Reserve? What, what is National Park? What is Wildlife Angeles? What is the difference between all these things? So, we need to know well about these protected areas. So, after knowing the concepts related to protected areas, we need to go in detail about the protected areas. That The protected areas in India. For example, there are more than 700 protected areas in India or it won't be able to study all the protected areas in India but we need to study important protected areas in India. When I say important what that means that protected area for example Silent Valley National Park okay so that protected area should be in news this year or previous year and that protected area have to be asked by the UPC previously or it should be having any special character. So if the protected area if that protected area is having any of this feature then you can study that. For example, that means uh, it should be there in news, it should be asked by the UPC previously and it should, be, it should be having a special feature. Special feature means, for example, Cable Lanjo National Park. It is the only uh, floating national park, right? That means Cable Lanjo National Park is having a floating vegetation called as foam disk. So, that is a special feature character regarding that protected area. So, we can study Cable Lanjo National Park, okay? In Kasiranga, Kasiranga. UPC has asked so several times regarding Kasirenka National Park, then Iravikula National Park. So, recently this year is the year of Nilakurunyi. Nilakurunyi blooms once in 12 years, right? So, that's why it was in news, Iravikula National Park and that is in Kerala. So, it was in Karnataka, right? So, if any 
national parks or wildlife sanctuaries or tiger reserves that means any protected areas are there in news then you have to study regarding that protected area okay and what are the things you have to study regarding that protected area is its name its location that means its state okay and if there are any rivers passing through that protected area we need to study for example through silent valley national park kundi puya river is flowing through nagarjuna sagar station and tiger reserve krishna river is flowing right through panna tiger reserve ken river is flowing through umaran kashanala wildlife sanctuary vein ganga river is flowing so like that if any river is flowing through any protected area we have to study that then mountain ranges and hills that means if that protected area is, is located on any mountain area we have to study that for example silent valley national park it is on the nilagiri hill ranges right or uh, nagarjuna sagar sishar and tiger reserve it is on the hill ranges called as nalamala hill ranges okay so nagarjuna sagar it is on nalamala hill range so like that we also need to study the hill ranges of that protected area then also we need to study regarding the main species which is protected in that protected area for example silent valley national park is protecting lion tailed macaque kasiranga is protecting one horned rhinos manas national park or manas biosphere reserve is protecting pygmy hawk gir national park is protect mainly protecting lions asiatic lions pakke wildlife sanctuary is mainly protecting hornbills desert national park is mainly protecting uh, great indian bustards the chinga wildlife sanctuary is mainly protecting hungols okay for the kashmir stag so like that we also need to study regarding the main species which are protected in that particular protected area okay so these are the main points you have to study regarding protected areas like the national parks tiger reserves wildlife sanctuaries like that so you know that recently kanchenjunga national park it was added to the world network of biosphere reserve okay so kanchenjunga was a biosphere reserve in india and it is this year in 2018 kanchenjunga is added to the world network of unesco's mab program okay so that is why kanchenjunga is in current affairs so that's why kanchenjunga is important so we need to study regarding kanchenjunga and last year also it was important because uh, last year it was given a mixed world heritage status so kanchenjunga was given a mixed world heritage status last year so that's why kanchenjunga is important like that if any national park or if any protected area is there in news you have to study that so the next area is regarding the biomes so there are lots of types of biomes in india right so we need to study regarding the concept related to biomes so we need to study what is this biome and the types of biome okay the characteristics of biome for example forest forest is having some characters right so forest is a biome desert is a biome uh, grassland is a biome uh, tundra is a biome aquatic biome is there right and under this forest we will be having lots of types of forest for example forest can be divided into temperate forest tropical forest and taiga and that tropical forest again will divide into uh, equatorial forest and deciduous forest or evergreen forest and deciduous forest so uh, the classification will be going like that and also we need to study regarding the main characteristics of that biome or ecosystem for example evergreen forest the features regarding evergreen forest the features regarding uh, deciduous forest the features regarding uh, taiga forest or coniferous forest the features regarding uh, savanna biome tropical savanna biome okay so all this natural vegetation is having all these vegetations is having some special characters so we need to study that for example evergreen forest or tropical forest or equatorial forest is having more than 200 cm rainfall and it is having evergreen trees it is the most complex forest in the world it is having tall trees it is having epiphytes there it is mainly having arboreal animals there so these are the some features regarding tropical evergreen forest and its soil is deficient in nutrients than that of the deciduous forest so like that there are lots of characters regarding tropical forest so we need to study that and regarding tropical savanna tropical savanna is a kind of grassland and the specialty or the feature of or the character of that tropical savanna is it will be having the grassland will be having individual isolated trees so that is the main point regarding tropical savanna so we need to study the main features regarding these kinds of natural vegetation okay so the character of natural vegetation then we need to study the major types of forest found in india so we have to know the major types of natural vegetation in india and also its distribution that means uh, wherever we can see this tropical evergreen forest in india for example we can see the wet evergreen forest in india in uh, kerala tamil nadu karnataka in western ghat in all and some states in northeast in andaman nicobar also right so we need to know the distribution of these kinds of natural vegetation in india 
and also we need to know the dominant tree species which can be seen in that particular vegetation. For example, as part of evergreen forest, we can see uh, evergreen trees like the mahogany, like that. Okay, and as part of deciduous tree, we can see the trees like the teak, sandalwood, red sanders. Okay, and as part of tropical thorn forest, we can see the caged tree like that, acacia tree like that. Okay, as part of a wetland ecosystem, we can see mangrove vegetation. So, we need to know the dominant tree species which are part of this kinds of vegetation, natural vegetation. Okay, so we also need to cover the natural vegetation in India. So, these are the main areas you need to cover from environmental science. Along with these all topics, you also need to cover pollution and biogeochemical cycles or the nutrient cycles. Okay, so the pollution because our recent days we know that the pollution in India is increasing, right? So, India is hosting more number of more amount of particular matters, mainly Delhi is hosting more number of particular matters, right? So, regarding this pollution, there are lots of news articles. So, that is why we also need to study regarding the pollution in detail. Now, these are some book list, that means these are some materials you can prefer for your UPC environment science preparation. First of all, in order to get a basic idea regarding environment science, you can go for NCRT books. So, it will be better if you are going from uh, 8 standards onwards. 8 standards onwards up to 12 standards we can prefer NCRT textbook in order to get a base idea regarding the concepts ok. So, under that there are some books which are very important like the 12th biology book under that we are having ecology module. In the 11th class we are having fundamentals of physical geography and under this book we are having life on earth, biodiversity and conservation. So, biodiversity is dealt in this fundamentals of physical geography book and in 11th standard itself we are, we are also having India physical geography and in, in this India physical geography book we are having natural vegetation. Plan. So, if you are going through this NCRT textbook you will be having, you will be getting a broad idea regarding or basic idea regarding this concepts. ok. Then in order to update with the current affairs, in order to recent initiatives of Indian government you can prefer India yearbook or we can go for newspaper articles ok along with this India yearbook you, you also need to update with the newspaper articles there are lots of news articles related to environment science so that is why you, have, you also need to go for news major newspapers like the Hindu Times of India Economic Times like that then you can also prefer the Shankarayas environment science book ok then if you are having any doubts regarding any other concepts Directly you can google it, if you are if you are not available with any of these books you can go for google. When you are preferring google you have to ensure that these are authentic sites ok. For example, if you need to know any uh, data regarding IUCN or WWF you can directly go for the official website of that WWF ok. So, rather than preferring some other websites you can go for that you can directly go for the official website of that organization WWF ok. So, if you need to get any uh, data regarding any Ramsar convention you can go for the official website of Ramsar convention like that right or you can prefer the new AS environment science materials. So, we are covering all these topics in our environment modules environment materials ok. So, these are the strategy for your environment science preparation. So, the main thing you have to do is you have to be thorough with all concepts, you have to update the current affairs and you have to solve the previous questions. So, these are the main things you have to do in your environment science preparation. Okay, thanks.